Hello and good Monday morning. Today we're going to take a look at near-death experiences because one of you asked us to. You can always send in a topic request to me at info at rsafeharbor.com and if it's something I can talk about then I'll do so and if it isn't I'll let you know. How's that? Well near-death experiences is something which I've heard a lot about in my life. I've read probably six to eight books and well over a dozen rigorous scientific studies on it and work continues uh, on this and it's it has captured the imagination for a very long time. I think Raymond Moody way back what in the early 80s really got this movement started but there'd been hints of it before. So what about near-death experiences? For, I mean, for some people they are life-changing events. I mean before their near-death experience they didn't believe and now they do or they were a bit of a jerk and now they're a nice person. Uh, there have even been a couple people who've written of near-death experiences where they've experienced something they, they think is hell and that has changed their life dramatically. I, I would assume so. <clears throat> but are they real? And is what the people are seeing real? Well, these are very complicated actually and please remember as always I do not argue with your experience. If the, what I say here seems to be saying no you didn't see and no it didn't mean it's merely because that's the evidence I've got in front of me. You may have experienced something but I won't argue against that and it doesn't factor into a big pile of evidence because no matter how many people tell a story that is not necessarily data. It has to be we have to be more rigorous than that. We are fearfully and wonderfully made and David was never more right than when he wrote that line. We are also mortal creatures. While we do believe that we have a spirit that will live forever, our bodies will not. And we see evidence of that every day with funerals, obituaries, with friends that we've lost, with hospitals, hospice and the like. We know that happens. However, while there are some very predictable patterns to the way we die, especially if it's of natural causes. We are all individuals when we die and therefore endlessly complex. The condensed version is this. When we're dying there is a massive release and of endorphins, serotonin, dopamine in our bloodstream. These are incredibly powerful neurochemicals and they were designed to have these released into us. It's as our bodies are breaking down, especially due to uh, pain, organ failure, fatigue. The grace of God has designed us to have these natural painkillers and natural distractions because it actually pumps the joy and happy chemical into our bodies to help us with our panic and our fear at what is occurring at that moment. All of these things also come with the gift of unconsciousness which is a gift. You're, you've been damaged, something has been very traumatic, you need to shut down and your body see if it can handle it and if not for you to pass. So God dumps these painkillers, happy feelings and actually turns the lights off at certain times right at the right time and we stop hurting and because of all these chemicals we enter in this vibrant living color fractured state and images rush at us and then you feel this tunnel of light thing as images come rushing and those those images are made up of random fragments of our life plus our expectations and belief systems plus our emotions and therefore we see in our mind some way and not with our eyes but we see those we love those who've gone before us we might see a being that is um, full of love and joy and running to wrap around us and welcome us in that calm state the blood vessels in our brains contract as um, oxygen fails to flow as it always has before 
and that shrinks our internal and external vision to tunnel. And by the way, there's, there's a similar phenomena when someone is, let's say a police officer who's never been involved in a firefight and somebody pulls a gun on them, there, there's a sudden tunnel. There's a tunnel vision that people get. And it can be fatal because you can be tunneled th this way and they've got somebody coming at you from the other direction. But this tunnel happens as we're dying, this narrowing of vision to a tunnel. And very often you'll see those you love, um, a sense of peace and joy as you are self-inoculated here. But it's all internal, self-generated. I don't believe it's a pulling aside of the cosmic curtain. And there, there are reasons for that. Um, you can get books where it says, look at all the similarities. But if you do the data, you find that there are more dissimilarities than similarities. You'll find also that the NDEs show a whole different cosmic reality to you. If, let's say if you're a Christian than they do if you're a Jew or a Muslim or an atheist, you have a completely different experience. Think, for example, of, a, of an amazing book by Ibn Alexander, Ibn is E-B-E-N, Alexander, neuroscientist, um, neurosurgeon, who had a particular type of neurological shutdown where when that part of the brain shuts down, you cannot form pictures in your brain. Just can't happen. And his book is called Proof of Heaven. And it's fascinating. And he describes things that were going on in other places that he could not have heard or seen or known. And he describes seeing this loving being, this sense of peace and acceptance. Now, he doesn't talk about Jesus in Matthew 23, and he doesn't, he doesn't go through all of, the, um, um, all of the doctrinal things that we would talk about. In fact, that bothers some Christians, that the fact that other people of other faiths and no faiths also seem to be being received by love. I don't know why that bothers anybody. First of all, if it's just a natural event, it's just a gift of God that that's the way we die. If it is a supernatural event, then we should rejoice that people, and whenever they die, wherever they die, and whatever they thought of, they're being met by love, being met by grace. Why would that bother us? If Jesus wants to love more people than us, I think that that should bring rejoicing rather than anger. But there are some issues. Your prior belief systems absolutely shape what you see and what you think it means, which would indicate it's not universal. It is more cultural uh, than it is universal. That while your body is doing all this release, the way you interpret it is far more uh, dependent upon your culture and your training instead of reality. We have had some embarrassing moments. If you read uh, articles on this and books on this by atheists, you will see that some of them, not most, but some of them take great joy in making fun of Christians because of a number of retractions that have been done. There was one young boy who uh, died and claimed to have seen a, a brother that he could not have known about. You know, there was a miscarriage and had discussions and they saw Jesus and that they talked and they even made a movie about this and made two major books and there were quite a lot of speaking engagements done until the boy got old enough to say, none of that happened, I was coached the entire way. And atheists love that. And that is not unique, it has happened again and again. Several years ago, back well before I moved to Tennessee, a dear lady gave me a gift. She really wanted me to, you know, because I know neuroscience. She said, you just, you're just going to love this. And there was a book of art and the story done by a young fellow who said that he died and went to heaven. And his art is still on sale. Uh, all these years later, you can go buy his pictures of Jesus that he painted about, this is Jesus. I met Jesus. 
and people just adore this stuff. But if you look at his paintings of Jesus, it's Kenny Loggins. I prom go look, it's Kenny Loggins. It's the feathered hair. It is the um, white person with a slight tan, but very European features and perfect teeth. Why would we expect to meet Jesus in a body? Why would we expect to need to see Jesus in a body when we're not in a body, not at least the one we were in? There are so many issues with this and, and the young fellow probably is sincere. I have no reason to believe that he's making it up, but whatever he saw was based upon his culture, his feelings, and the musical taste of his parents, most likely. So am I just being a party pooper and dissing everybody here? No, I would really like to have the gift of an NDE, um, even if it has no ultimate reality at all, because I believe that the ultimate reality is going to be, woohoo, I'm very happy about that. But let me put it to you this way. I'm not afraid of death at all, period, ready to go right now. Let's go. But I am concerned about dying. It's that process that really concerns me because I don't want to die a whole lot of different ways. Uh, I, I, you know, being hit by a meteor, that would actually be pretty cool because you wouldn't feel anything and you'd make the news. So, you know, what's not to like? Um, and so you can start praying for that now, actually. Um, but if I'm dying and I know that God's going to make me, e ease me through the journey, through these neurochemicals and through this biological action of the brain, I accept that as a gift, knowing that on the other side, I get even something better. And if I'm wrong, it doesn't affect you at all because my belief will not change your experience if I'm wrong. And if I'm right, it probably won't change your experience either. So simple answer is I do not believe that near death experiences have given us enough evidence for us to say that this is a glimpse of the beyond. However, I do believe that some experiences like Dr. Alexander's indicate that our body is not our eternal home and that our spirit can move about as we are dying and uh, see some things and know some things. I think we're, it's a very, very fascinating thing, needs to be studied more. But I also believe that no matter what you believe about this or about a thousand other things, that you're my brother and sister that you are a daughter or a son of Almighty God, and you're to be treated with respect. So if you come and you tell me your story, there will be no eye rolling inside or out. Instead, I'll ask you questions and I will rejoice with you if you had a happy experience. And if you didn't, I will commiserate with you because that's what I'm supposed to do. Have a great week. God bless. Cheers.